It is 3.24. You're listening to Sunny and Shay on BBC WM 95.6. It's time for afternoon tea. And joining us for afternoon tea is innovator Steve Priestnell. Now, he founded MoveOnix in 2012 after coming up with the idea for Movo Ball, the gym ball joystick. And he's in the studio to tell us more. Sunny's very excited because you are a real gadget man, aren't you, Sunny? If it's gadgets involved, I'll go to the gym. Yes. When the gadgets aren't involved, I'm not so <laughs> interested in the gym, right? Because I think that I want to do something in a gym yes that i can't do at home right so if someone wants me to run on the spot i'm like what for i can do that from here to the gym and i just run back again <laughs> you know what I'm Steve, thank you so much for popping in uh, for afternoon tea what is movo is it movo or movo ball it can be either or okay um, and and how did you come back how did you come about with the idea then um so back in sort of 2009 um i was working from home i don't know if i had too many pies but i leant back on my <laughs> chair and uh, basically it broke so i went downstairs rummaged around couldn't find a, a kitchen chair and i spotted a, a gym ball under the stairs so i went back upstairs carried on working got to uh, the end of the day that could have been the end of the story um but it was always a little bit of me time at the end of the day for um sort of playing on my xbox right so essentially um switched on my xbox sitting on my gym ball started playing halo which is like a shoot 'em up yeah yeah um, so a new one coming out soon there's a new number five <laughs> coming out yes <laughs> don't worry i'm, I'm uh, a geek yeah, like you yeah there we go good man uh, we're talking the same language yeah so essentially um started playing this game and uh, almost within sort of three or four minutes started realizing that well something was different the gameplay felt a bit different and i was just wondering what it was i was getting more involved in the game um i'd say my heart rate was a little bit raised uh, working up a little bit of a sweat as well mm -hmm. and i was thinking whoa and it was like a eureka moment all of a sudden i thought well with all this problem with kids with obesity with you know playing games all you're going to do is exercise your fingers there's no sort of engagement there mm -hmm. maybe there's something in this if i could take some of the most play out of the the, the game the, the video game and put that into the gym ball wouldn't that be an invention wouldn't that be an yeah. idea that's a very good idea so yeah. that's basically what i can but I, I was like I say back in 2009 that's when it started and it's taken me probably two or three years to sort of develop it i mean in terms of the process i went through i started off with a metal wok yeah you know sort of drilled a hole in it um connected that to an uh, just a normal joystick mm -hmm. started wobbling around on that that broke i then looked <laughs> at um, industrial um sort of joysticks again that didn't seem to work um but then I actually proved it with um there was a uh, a little device i'd got which was what the old tracker balls mm. i don't know if you remember you used to play there's there was a game um like a defender game you used to play with a tracker ball that you um um basically put a hole in that put it together and um it i could actually move a cursor around yeah. the screen yeah so i proved it um uh, proved it would work and then um looked at then how do i get sort of gameplay into that and it was probably about 2012 my wife bought an iphone i found that there was a, a motion game on there right um, called the wooden labyrinth yeah um I, I developed a plastic cradle put that in um the the, the game into the phone put the phone into the cradle <laughs> and uh, lo and behold i could play it just as well as i could in my hands so it was almost like everything sort of coming together yeah. we've got fitness elements you've got gaming we could actually download applications straight from your phone oh, put that those is in so brilliant. yeah so, so what we're going to do is you've talked about it yeah and how you got to the invention yeah. do you have it with you today i've got the um i've got the cradle okay. right. an example of sort of oh, how, nice. it, how it works right. okay yeah. what we're going to do is wanna... we're going to come back we're going to take a picture of that and put it on our facebook page yes. so we okay. can see it well you might want to use the uh this is the sort of rolls royce we're going to come back yeah, okay and we're going to talk about the rolls royce version of oh. getting fit while playing games <laughs> i think you have just made my husband's day i have to say steve he's smiling cheek to cheek with this one does sound familiar doesn't it sunny it does indeed it's one of my favorite shows of when i was growing up it was called mr inspector gadget it's going to come in a minute it's going to start in advertising stuff but everyone knows and right now we have a gadget maker in of the sorts. studio we of certainly sorts. do not um, necessarily an inspector of any kind no but he's, he's definitely come up with a very cool gadget i have to say uh we've still got with us uh, in the studio steve priestnell he's been talking to us well we're calling him innovator steve um because he's founded uh Move in 2012 after coming up with the idea for Movable. It's a gym ball joystick. So basically, you mix gaming. So for those of you who love to play PlayStation, 
Xbox and all of the other games. And, that kind and of game games means, on your phone as well, Yes, Shay. games on your phone too with keeping fit. Mm. Steve, this must be a dream come true for every single parent who's fed up with their, their kids sitting on the couch and just playing games on the TV. I, I think so. I think in terms of um, what, it, what it basically can do, it can cut down a lot of argument and grief <laughs> in, the, in the house because I think uh, what you can do is uh, get your kids to play on the, uh, the gym ball joystick. Obviously, there is an element of exercise in that. So whilst they're playing that, they're, they're getting um, a fit as well. And, and that was one of the reasons why we came up with the uh, the idea. Now, there is uh, there, is, there are products out there that you can sit on and you can exercise while you work and what have you. But this is quite a different take because the ball itself, let's be clear, is the joystick. To move around the screen and what have you, the ball will do the movement as you move your body around on the ball. Yes, exactly that. Right. Exactly that. And, and what, what will drive this, again, we... we we basically developed the tool, which is the movable. But what's actually going to drive this is the applications and the games behind right. it. Right. So again, this this can go out into lots of different areas. Not just if initially it's about gaming, but it can go into fitness. Imagine if you want to strengthen up your core. Yes. Again, what, what we've done a lot of research around is sort of g uh, gamification. I don't know if you've heard of that. No. So basically, what that is, it's um, it's almost using game mechanics and gameplay to drive a behaviour that you want. Mm -hmm. So again, instead of going to the gym and just doing your 200 crunches or or, or sit-ups, what we can do is we can design a game which you play the game, but underneath that, the mechanics actually create you doing 20, 200 crunches. Right. Oh, nice. So, again, these are the sort of things we need to work with, with, you know, fitness instructors and people like that who will come up with their own ideas of actually developing and delivering these applications. Mm. But fundamentally, it, it puts the game and, and the gameplay into maybe what are boring exercises mm. or even health treatments. So, mm. again, we've looked at things like bad backs and, and there are exercises sizes out there for, for gym balls uh, and again imagine being able to just either play a game or go through a set routine and, and that may help to alleviate back pain so again it's a little bit further down the track it I mean, is yeah, yeah so it's we, the beginning it's the initial stages now and um, you're from Edgebaston so you're yes. a local guy from, from here in Birmingham and uh, I've just had a look online you've got movable the motion picture <laughs> which is quite fun Brilliant. because it shows uh, and do check it out if you can go into to just uh, go into your google search or internet and you'll be able to see it there um but you can see you know this fantastic idea of that the ball is traveling right through past the mailbox from edge passage right right through all over basically the, the key points of birmingham but it's all about this young kid who really wants to play his games and his parents have said he's got to keep fit <laughs> uh, now all of this has come together because of course you've got a kickstarter campaign haven't you so tell us a little bit about the kickstarter campaign and what kickstarter is yes. yeah so basic kickstarter is crowdfunding so in the good old days when you wanted to get a product uh, out there you'd need to go to your bank manager or mm -hmm. you need to get you know a single investor or a few few friends together um, and obviously that can be quite expensive and, and banks will go through a big routine and making sure that you're going to pay the money back and all those sort of things and inventors like me that that's probably difficult to do you know we've got mm. mortgages we've got yes. you know outgoings so basically crowdfunding um, it allows people who are interested in the idea or people who are interested in in the product so if you do like movable if you like like the video and, and you think it's something that um, would be of interest to, to you or your family um, basically what you can do is you can pledge a small amount of money um, you know you sort of minimum is around two pounds mm. but you can if you want to pre-order um, one of the cradles the plastic cradles that are wrapped up to 48 pounds um, and the idea behind that is lots of people contribute small amounts of money and those small amounts of money obviously get us to where we need to get to so mm -hmm. we, we have a pledge target uh, of around 40,000 pounds that's going to allow us to invest in all of the tooling that we need need um, for the for the plastics for the aluminium and also for the the, the carbon fiber the pro version mm. um, so that's essentially what we're we're doing here so it, it almost allows us um, to, to test the market to see if people are interested in it um, if they are interested they contribute a little bit of money all of those little bits of money add up um, if we don't reach our target unfortunately we don't get anything oh, so wow. again no money comes out of your account it's not that I can run away to the bar yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. harm us with it um, <laughs> ba basically um, and how um, how long is it on for then has it just begun um, or? we've been running for about f um sorry it's a four week program we've been running for just over two weeks now so we've got okay. a little over two weeks left okay um, and are you what's closer your to your target so far? 
We've got up to around, I think, seven or eight thousand pounds. Okay, okay. so okay. long way to go yet. Yeah, long way to go. We're about um, getting up to twenty percent now. If we can Fantastic. hit the ten k, so yeah. So again, if there are people out there that um, that are interested, we've yeah. still got a little bit of time. Hopefully, with um, obviously coming on the show and yeah. uh, talking, we we may also be on television. Um, we, we're seeing some so people. So the, the, some concerns that my people might have that has anyone had this idea before? Have you already safeguarded it by pat patent patenting it, patenting it, yeah. patenting it? Sorry. And uh, if so, uh, how long is the patent for and all those kind of concerns? Yeah, no, definitely. So we took the patent out in 2013, right. which was basically UK patent. So we've had that. That's now been published. Um, this year also, um, it, by publishing in 2013, that allowed us to apply for a USA patent. Right. So that's actually in process now, but that will take about three years. So okay. we've got three years for that to go through um, the, but the, the process. But the good news is you've got, you've got it here in the UK. So if someone's listening thinking this sounds like a lot of fun i would love to support you what's the website what's the kickstarter details for them to go on to so if you go the easy thing to do is go into kickstarter and just search on movable which is m-o-v-o-b-a-l-l um, that will come up with a little picture of, of the movable just click onto that link that will take you through to the video to a little bit of an introduction as well not just the film but a little bit about kickstarter and what we need the, the funding for and then also um it will give you on the right hand side some pledges and rewards mm. so again you can just pledge um, we have a thing called the ball of fame yeah um which is basically your name in lights if you pledge you'll get your name on the ball of fame nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so that will be good and then that goes right the way through to um even the first one off the production line of, of the movable pro but i mean that that is sort of five thousand pounds so wow. unless somebody's got some very deep pockets there. <laughs> <laughs> but you could be making history you, never know. you no, could be you never making know. history if, if this if and this... i'm pretty sure we will at some point be seeing you on, on dragon's den as well look we're going to continue talking um with steve and we're going to have some more afternoon guests as well uh, straight after this Sunny and Shay on BBC WM 95.6. Your voice in the West Midlands. I cannot wait to hear um, that interview by Ed Doolan. Make sure you do as well. Um, it's this weekend. Right now, though, it is 3.48. Sunny and Shay here on BBC WM. We're here with you till 4 o'clock today. And after that, uh, Frank C is on his way. Now, we've been talking to Steve Priestnell, um, inventor Steve Priestnell, about his latest project. Uh, it's called Movable. It's the Jim Ball Joy stick you can go to kick funder and just type in kick M what kick funder kick kickstarter maybe kickstarter crowdfunding site is what i meant to say <laughs> and m o v o b a w l if you type that in you'll be able to see further details there but steve um i think with all of us there's an inventor in all of us isn't there have you always enjoyed inventing from a young age then um i have yes i mean it, it, you could say what else have you created then um you laugh now. But Go on. Back in um, back when I was about 16, 17, I used to be into paintball gaming. Right. And um, I decided that yeah, it'd be great having um, you know paintball gun, but surely you, it'd be better if you had like a rocket launcher. <laughs> and I literally designed. <laughs> oh, I know. It, I literally designed a rocket launcher using. I don't know if you've seen the rockets that you put water into, <laughs> and you literally pump them up. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. they literally go shooting. Boom. Well, yeah. I thought, well, if I could make a rocket which is pumped up water. <laughs> with a big paintball canister on the end of it or a smoke canister or whatever surely that would be a really have good ever, idea did you yeah. ever go paintballing have i used to go paintballing loads of yeah, times and yeah do you know how much those little pellets hurt oh can you imagine one of those cannons <laughs> <going out? laughs> what's that one I, hadn't, I probably hadn't thought it through on the old healthcare. i did actually send my designs off to a couple of places and they said have you got a working one i said well i haven't really got that far i was just yeah. in it seemed for the interest and would but, they yeah. need to got interest yeah i was thinking what are you gonna hit with that either one of their bases maybe <laughs> That would be quite a good idea. Just yeah. colour their paint, paint it red. That's yours, and you're green. If you get your cannon there and blow it up, I can see that. But we are a country of inventors, aren't we? Yes. And uh, there's so many inventors that have come before and had really weird ideas, and as a result, it's moved us forward as a human race. Well, I've got a list actually here on, of, of some of the great inventions, and I think qu quite a lot of these gadgets. Okay, um, so don't give away the name. Okay. Give us the name of the inventor or the invention, right? And we'll try to find out if our listeners know the name and okay. then we'll give her the names at the end okay all, all right. right so you so mean within the next five minutes in the then. next five five minutes look yeah. at the time sonny okay all right, sure? listening. All right just, okay all right just give us one person okay i'll right. give you one person i was quite surprised about this so this gadget owes its existence to birmingham uh, famous engineer james watt 
he patented something. So if you've got any what, yeah. ideas, that was in 1779. James do you have any Watt. idea? Eight, so. eight you, one triple okay. three. Start the message of WM. But come on in, Steve. Tell us who you, what do you think it was? Um, come close to your mic, though. Oh, sorry. Uh, it was to do with steam, wasn't it? A steam engine or a. Uh, James can't say yes or no, ah, well, right? Sorry. So eight one triple three. Start your message with WM. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. No, but you, you, you're thinking, <laughs> you're thinking that it might be something to do with steam. Yes. Okay, so but you're not sure. It's something around that. Okay. Something around. They're very vague. You know, considering yeah, you I'll... looked at the age, you think, what was it around at that time? <laughs> oh yeah, the steam around that time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it must be something to do with steam. Well, it wasn't electricity. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> oh, yes, that's a very good point. <laughs> I was like, the laptop, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I love this one. Now, I've always really wanted to learn to roller skate. I really have. Right. And the skateboard wheels owe their existence to Birmingham uh, to tool makers wow. William uh, Bowne and Joseph Henry Hughes in 1877. Uh, so they created the design for skate wheels uh, that had the ring of ball bearings on, or rollers basically in the middle. So that's come from here. Wow. So can you imagine you know telling someone that idea? What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull <laughs> wheels on your feet yeah. so that you can you know, wheel around town. <laughs> Seems okay. a good salesman. I'm they? telling you, uh, how do you even think about coming up with an idea like that, number one? Yeah. And then, obviously, kids probably, you know, sliding on ice and what have you, your imagination runs wild, but then to just go to the extent of actually putting all that, like your your invention, for example, yeah. you were just sitting around, your chair broke because you're overweight. <laughs> not now. No, right? no, 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 not now. You're fit now. Yeah. What about this one? I think this one's a really great one. Go on. uh, I know you're going to say for the ladies, but I think it's for everybody. Here we go. Um, it was Gloucester engineer Hubert Cecil Is it Booth. lipstick? No, it's not. <laughs> who invented the first motor-driven vacuum cleaner. Wow. Vacuum cleaner? Yes. Oh, okay. Now so, he invented it, and it was a vacuum cleaner in London in 1901. Uh, but in 1905, the idea was re uh, re revolutionised here in Birmingham, and it was Walter Griffiths um, of, from Highgate who built the first portable vacuum cleaner and it was intended specifically for us to use at home for that us domestic nice. goddesses so I now think you, that's a great now, one you know, you know the inventor that we're talking about yes James yeah. Watt James Watt we already have some texts okay. if you want to have a read yes I, I unfortunately can't okay, so, okay. Yeah, you go ahead so uh, we've got Rob who said it's the light bulbs okay okay and we have Jay yes. who seconds that okay, okay. and uh, he's a steam engineer Okay, but this Comes is from, a something... Uh, text ending 498. Okay, so thanks for all those texts, guys. But this is something very specific. I know he was a famous engineer, but he patented something in 1779. Um, and... Uh, I can't give you the... Even if I try to describe it, it's just going to give it yeah. away. That's the annoying thing. But listen, let me let me just ask you this, Steve, just before uh, before we before we go. Um, with things like inventions, you know, especially at school, do you think that we do encourage our kids enough uh, to really, you know, in science, inventing, do you think we do enough of that nowadays? Or is it very textbook the way that we are with our academics? That, that would be my worry. Um, it, it's, it's, it's almost imagination that you need yeah. with inventing things. Absolutely. And, and, and if there's anybody out there who could take a little bit of advice or how I sort of approach yes. things think of a problem and then how would you solve that problem and simplify it exactly right so it's simplify and simplify and simplify I mean basically that's all all I've got is a basically a wok with <laughs> electronics in it that's, that's yeah. all it is it's yeah. simple but the applications that will drive that uh, there's there could be millions you yeah. know that, that's what's going to drive it and you know we need to get developers involved developers start thinking of problems talking to what we call sort of subject matter matter experts, people who've got a problem and, and something they need solving, you know, talk to a developer and say, well, how could we do this? You create that into a, either a game or an application and, and away we go. But and, and now we are so uh, spoiled with technology anyway. We've got 3D printers. 
that almost brings things to life now. I know we've been talking about them for years. We hear about these 3D printers, but they're not in our homes at this point. But, no. you know, when they do end up in our homes, we might not even have to go to the shops. It's going to be a manufacturer's yeah. paradise. I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. Especially an inventor's paradise. Oh. You can make prototypes and smatics into your computer and you go, there you go, there's my prototype. Exactly. Have a go. Do it, you know what I mean? Thank you, know, you so I much can for tell, I can out. tell you and Sonny, Steve, you'd just be talking all, all day long about gadgets. We could. Guys and gadgets, <laughs> I love it. Um, look, just before we, before we end the show then, so we've been asking you who uh, invented, oh, sorry, James Watt patented something very famous in 1779. Have we had any more messages? No, that was through? the last okay. one from Rob okay. and okay. Jay. Okay, so thanks to Rob and Jay. In 1779, he patented a letter copying machine. So basically the, the photo first the oh, photocopier. Wow. And he did it. And do you know what you were just talking about? Yeah. Dealing with a problem. He did it specifically because he had so much paperwork at his business. Uh, he'd had enough. Uh, so he needed to, to sort out a way. And he also created a special ink to use within oh, the photocopier. Uh, all happening in Birmingham. Um, I know. So he lived in Regent's Place in Birmingham uh, from 1777 to 1790. And he spent most of his time uh, working with Birmingham manufacturer Matt Matthew Bolton of Soho House on developing the steam engines. Wow. So you might know him for the steam engines, but you wouldn't have known him for the photocopier. Not at all. But there, there you go. go. That's a problem that we all need to solve. A bit of knowledge right. for Listen, the afternoon. Um, Steve, thank you so much for popping in today for afternoon tea. It's been a pleasure. And if you want further details, don't forget you can go to the Kickstarter crowdfunding website and just type in M-O-V-O-B-A-L-L, Movoball, uh, for further details if you would like to support uh, this product, which I think is great. It's from Birmingham. It's made by Steve here in Edgebaston, so we've got to support it.